All right, everyone, so it's been about three years since I've posted a video. Don't really have much of an excuse besides the fact that I've been at college and I never really saw this channel really taken off um, and I just kind of want to do, you know, make videos for fun. I started started out uh, a long time ago, like back in like 2008, I think I was posting music videos uh, tailored to video games when I was like, I'm trying to think how old I would have been. I was probably in like sixth grade or something. Now I am 21 years old and I'm back, I guess. Uh, we'll see if this is a permanent thing. I had something that I wanted to talk about specifically today, and that is the Halo series, which is kind of in a weird place right now. Seeing as E3 just occurred a couple weeks ago and at the Xbox press conference where they announced the new Xbox One X, the Halo franchise was not even really mentioned. There was a brief discussion about the 4K update that'll come for Halo Wars 2, not even for Halo 5. Um, there's not even an update being talked about for that, but yeah, for Halo Wars 2. That's just such a strange place to see the Halo franchise in 2017. It's, it's in a place where it's not important to the Xbox brand or vital to the existence of the Xbox brand. And they're going to launch a new console without even really talking about the Halo franchise at all or having a title in the pipeline being discussed. Uh, they haven't announced Halo 6 formally. Obviously, it probably and definitely does exist, but um, it's not even being talked about. I'm a pretty huge Halo fan. The Halo fan franchise is pretty important to me. It's probably my favorite sci-fi franchise. And uh, when the franchise got tossed, or passed over, sorry, not tossed, except for it kind of seems like it sometimes, to 343 Industries, it kind of lost a lot of its uh, luster and a lot of what made it special, I feel like. I'm, I'm kind of active in the Halo community on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter in general, but I was on Twitter and I, I found a uh, post of a Halo 4 concept art that looked actually really sharp, but I made a comment on it and I was like kind of saying, oh, well, don't forget that, you know, this game screwed up a lot of stuff. The game took me aback back in uh, 2012. It really, really got me confused when it came out with its, uh, you know, kill streak design, kind of like Call of Duty and its multiplayer. There were a lot of confusions with the art design and some choices in terms of level design and things like that I, that I just really didn't, didn't agree with. And, and the story kind of messed me up as well. I mean, the Cortana aspect of her, you know, finally going away and losing her mind, which, I mean, that kind of was touched on in Halo 3, let's be honest, um, with the grave mind and corrupting her. Uh, but they decided to kind of retread that path and do it a little bit more finite, uh, a little more final with her actually dying at the end, more or less, which we see in Halo 5 is a little, you know, not exactly all, all that true. With Halo 4, uh, the, the problems were right from the get-go, um, literally walking out the door. And by the door, I mean the door of the cryotube. So, Chief walks out of the cryotube, looks completely different visually. This is this was as jarring as it gets. Um, the game was just extremely unpolished as well. I mean, you're fighting on the forward of the dawn, and you're seeing these explosions occur outside, and they are not magnificent, let me tell you. It's really pathetic. Um, in my opinion, and it was just subpar compared to prior Halo releases. So I, I really was just not a fan of Halo 4. Halo 5 I actually like a little better because it's more of a traditional Halo game. The multiplayer is even, even starts and all that stuff, which is really important to me um, and to, I think to a lot of Halo gamers. Anyway, back to what happened today. So today I was on Twitter um, and I, I found this piece of Halo 4 artwork and it was really cool, but I responded to it and basically said, well, don't forget how they changed Chief's armor with no canonical explanation. And somebody responded to me and said, oh, well, it was the nano machines. It was the nano machines, you know? And th this was reference to a, um, a forum post, not even an explanation in game. It was a forum post by uh, Frank O'Connor, uh, who works at 343 Industries, he's a pretty uh, important guy, figurehead, and he uh, worked at Bungie uh, prior in a community development role. And um, so he, I think he's the only employee from Bungie to move over to 343 Industries. So you'd think, you know, he had a pretty, pretty important, important voice in the Halo community still. But yeah, so he said, he said on a community post, he basically said, oh, well, the reason for the armor change is nano machines. And he said that Cortana basically updated his armor 
uh, in the in the format of basically what is a firmware update. And so she like literally physically changed his armor while he was in a cryo tube for four years, which doesn't make any sense. And uh, I mean, as you go through the game, as the game progresses, you see all the weapons and things, and everything looks different. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The Covenant are back. Um, which you can read about in the exterior books, and that didn't really make me that angry in comparison to all of the visual changes that really made no sense. I mean, a ship that's adrift for four years shouldn't really, you know, and it's got all of its cargo on board with weapons and vehicles. That that stuff shouldn't change appearance, should it? No, it probably shouldn't. And there also is the existence of the DMR, which wasn't even on board in Halo 3, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. The BR, you know, after you crash, you land on Requiem, and you get, um, you get the BR and the DMR, and they just look completely different, um... Or at least the BR looks completely different from what it looked like in Halo 3, which makes no sense. Anyway, so I was just making a comment on that, and the art design argument has been, you know, it's really prominent in the Halo community, so I'm not the first person. I'm not trying to be revolutionary here. But the perspective that I want to add is that what do all these changes mean for the future of Halo? When 343 is done with Halo at the end of its days, what is Halo going to be? Yeah, so let me get back to the story. So I, I make my comment on the, the concept art on Twitter. And Jeff Easterling, uh, Grim Brother one responded to my uh, response to the concept art tweet um, and basically said, and he just kind of laughed at me at first, and I was like, hey, man, I, I don't mean any hate by it because I do appreciate, you know, that somebody is still working on Halo. I mean, it could be nobody, right? And he goes on to say, um, you know, that he actually disagrees with, with the way that that was handled as well in Halo 4, that that the uh, art style shouldn't have drastically changed with no no explanation. And he said that if he was in charge of Halo 4 Anniversary, that he would have the armor be Halo 3 until arriving at the Infinity. So basically, he'd have, have Chief change into his Halo 4 armor once he arrives at the uh, UNSC Infinity uh, ship, which makes complete sense to me, and I've actually thought about that in my own head, as has um, many other people, apparently, who responded in the comments. Um, so we, we went on to discuss a lot of different um, topics uh, within the Halo universe, you know, just like, you know, canon, uh, canon stuff that was just inconsistent and things like that. I was just kind of arguing about how it's not um, consistent and that maybe they need to trim it down, trim down the fat kind of like they did with the Star Wars franchise, but maybe do it a little bit more respectfully than cutting out a large portion of um, literature that that Star Wars did. But anyway, so I was kind of getting argued with quite a bit by other people in the community, specifically uh, Ian from Halo Cannon and Ratman Joe, who uh, he posts uh, quite a few um, blog posts about Halo and a few other franchises. But basically, uh, they were arguing with me that the canon is, uh, you know, the canon is what it is. It's, it's basically the Bible and you can't, they weren't, they weren't saying that I couldn't disagree with it. And in fact, they let, when I clarified that I was just disagreeing and not, you know, accepting it, um, they, they they let that they let that fly, but they were being pretty um, stagnant that I was being um, unfair to three four three, which I think is just you know following blindly like a blind sheep. But so I went on to talk about how the didact in Halo Four. I mean, if you didn't read the Forerunner trilogy of novels in the Halo franchise, which I did, fortunately, and they were awesome. They're awesome books. I definitely recommend by Greg Bear the Forerunner trilogy. Definitely recommend reading them if you're a Halo fan or a fan of those books. But I, I was arguing that the reveal of the Forerunners was just extremely uh, anticlimactic because, I mean, for years they were this big foreboding presence and they were just, this, you know, kind of this mystery, really. They were just a big mystery. They left behind all these things and all of a sudden here they were and they had a face and it was just very, they were just like any other alien. They were a humanoid creature, really not that interesting. So I, I just was kind of disappointed in that. The Didact's origins aren't in the game. Like, no one really knows what this guy's deal is and they try to explain it with the cutscene between the librarian and but it became all very confusing for a halo game i mean at, at its at its core halo 4 was about cortana and chief right that's what it should have been about but it became a little bit convoluted once they started introducing all this foreigner lore that people weren't familiar with and it just wasn't very well done in the game specifically people were like well okay but like it makes sense within you know the boundaries there's this bad guy like if you're just playing the game it makes sense there's this bad guy and uh, you gotta go take him down because he wants to take over the universe. And like, I'm like, all right, yeah, you know what, that's fair. But what about Blue Team's introduction in Halo 5? There is literally no context whatsoever with that. I mean, all of a sudden, they're there again. Like, they were gone for years. If you read the novels, you knew, you knew about them. But if you didn't even read the novels, you're wondering, who are these people? To this day, you're probably wondering, who are these people? I mean, in one of the early cutscenes, um, I believe that um, Fred says to Kelly, See, this is bad because I couldn't even tell you which if it was Kelly or Linda because they were so uninteresting in the game. Um, he basically says, Fred says that um, this is the worst that he's seen Chief since boot camp. 
I haven't seen Chief press himself like this since we were in boot camp. He's fine, Fred. And this many missions nonstop isn't fun. Which you're like, oh, you know, if you never played or if you never knew the Halo backstory or Master Chief's backstory, you'd be like, oh, he knows Chief since he's known him since the boot camp. Like what? You'd be so confused. And anyway, so I said, I basically made the point. I said that Blue Team's return makes zero sense and that you shouldn't really require, um, you know, extended universe uh, information in order to understand the story. And I said that, um, you know, this is like at a certain point, it becomes like expanding the universe to the point where it's like all about selling toys and selling books and selling extra media. And it's 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 not about the games anymore. It's it's basically about I mean, honestly, Star Wars falls prey to this. I love Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. But I mean, they have so much media that it becomes like, is this even necessary to the core experience anymore? Like, is this I mean, do I need to know these little facts? I mean, no, you, you don't really need to know these little stories. It's nice to, you know, have a universe where you can have endless storytelling and things like that. But, like, at a certain point, it becomes... It's not about, you know, expanding the universe with a purpose. It's about expanding the universe for just expanding the universe and making more sales, basically. So I made that point. And, um, I mean, that that's a problem with any franchise. But... And a lot of people are like, oh, well, this stuff is this stuff. This stuff exists like it's been there. It's canon that blue team still existed and that, you know, all this stuff was still there. But the problem arises when it's not explained or introduced correctly. Um, So it might already exist in the books and stuff, but it needs to be introduced to people who have never even heard of it before or heard of them. And by them, I mean blue team. I basically made the point that these items need to be introduced correctly. I mean, some people who are playing the game have never heard of them. They might exist prior um in in canon but people who are playing the games uh all in a row they they don't know anything about this stuff that's outside the games so i said they weren't even in any game they weren't in the games at all and by them i mean blue team and that this is a game franchise it's a game franchise and random characters are popping up who are they some people just really don't know um and there's no reason why a game game story can't exist within itself you know there's no reason that you need to go get other media to understand the story i mean it should entice you to go get more things like you make a great game story then you can start talking about books then you can start talking about you know animated series or tv shows but 343 is just jumping to these things these books these animated series to these toys without making you know a great halo game to begin with it's not even a complete Halo game. They haven't been able to include the complete package that Bungie was able to include with Halo Reach. Without a doubt, Halo Reach is the most complete game in the franchise, okay? Halo Reach has multiplayer. It has campaign, which you can play over and over and over again. It has firefight. It's got theater in both multiplayer and campaign. It's got forge, okay? This is a complete package. This is what we came to expect at the end of Bungie's time with Halo. That was a complete Halo package, and Halo 4 lacked many of these features. Halo 5 continued to lack many of these features, and now it all makes sense to me. It makes sense why why these features were lacked. Today, when we were discussing story in the game, and now this is just story, so think about all the modes and all the features and things that are not being focused on over at 343. Jeff Easterling, uh, Grim Brother 1, responded to my comment about the story not being in the game with Blue Team, about them just randomly popping in. And I I said that this is a game franchise. And he said, no, this is an entertainment franchise. Now this is 343's problem. This is why they will never be as successful as Bungie was with the Halo franchise. It's because they have... They have these grand aspirations to become something as big as as Star Wars, but they're a video game franchise. I responded to him with a picture of the Halo Wikipedia page, and I I was immediately attacked. What the Halo Wikipedia page basically said, and I'll put it up here, um, the definition, Halo is a first-person shooter video game franchise. Okay? That's what that's what Halo is. It's a game, okay? Oh my god! What it comes down to is getting together with people and being able to yell at them. Being able to like reflect on the gameplay afterwards. Jump up and scream and throw your controller down and you hate it but you love it and you gotta play again. <laughs> You're not Star Wars, okay? You don't have the lack of barrier to entry. There's a huge barrier to entry 
if you're a video game, okay, instead of a movie. Because anyone can go buy a movie ticket. Some people literally can't play video games. They're not capable in terms of, they're not willing to learn how to play video games. So Halo will never, ever be as big as Star Wars. Never. And maybe they're not aiming for that. Maybe they're aiming for, you know, the Wendy's of the f- fast food chains. Maybe it's not the biggest um, or grandest franchise, but they're they're looking to do... They're looking to change Halo from being a video game franchise into something that it's not, which is, to me, it's worrying because they're not focused on making a complete packaged game. For me, Halo has always been more than a game. It's an amazing experience that takes place in a rich and deeply connected sci-fi universe, a universe in which we can tell hundreds of stories. We tell these stories through our games, our novels, and most recently, our award-winning web series, Forward Unto Dawn. They're not worried about making a game with all the features at launch. They're worried about making toy sales, book sales, they're worried about making a TV series or a cartoon series. They're not concerned about making the best experience for gamers anymore. And that's really, really sad. So at the end of the day, I, I was really not surprised to hear Grim Brother 1. Uh, and by Grim Brother 1, I mean Jeff Easterling of 343 Industries. I was not surprised to hear that response from him. Basically, his excuse for the story not being completely in the game is that Halo isn't a video game franchise anymore, and that's according to 343 Industries. That's what their perspective is, and that, you know, I think it's been evident in their actions. It's, you know, they're focused on making these series. They're coming out on on stage at at E3, not this year, a few years ago, coming out and saying that they're doing a TV show with Steven Spielberg. They're not concerned about, about making the best game product anymore. And I, it's funny because I, in response to some of my tweets, I saw somebody said, you know, the only part of canon that needs to be cut out is Halo Reach um, because Halo Reach is inconsistent with the novels and all that stuff. I immediately thought about how well received Halo Reach was in comparison to Halo 4 and Halo 5 and how complete of a package and how kick-ass of a game that was because it was, you know, Bungie sat down and tried to make the best game that they could. They didn't worry about all of the outside um, items because they knew that they were working on a video game, okay? That's what Halo is, that's what Halo will be, and that's what Halo will always be. And I think that they have, and by they, I mean 343 Industries, has an issue with understanding this. And it's almost like they're stuck with, they're stuck in the mindset of Microsoft about like five years ago when the, the Xbox One was being launched and it was supposed to be this entertainment system. It's like they didn't catch up with the rest of the company. I mean, everyone knows that the Xbox is a gaming platform, okay? It's not an entertainment platform. And I think that 343 Industries needs to realize that Halo is not entertainment property. It's a gaming property, and that's what it always will be. I know you, your past, your future. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I really appreciate you, um, you know, listening to my opinion for a while. I hope that I didn't get on too much of a soapbox, and I hope I put some food for thought out there because I am really concerned about you know the state of Halo. It's kind of in a weird spot. I mean, there's a lot of disagreements going on in the community, um, you know, mostly about art style. You know, like I said, there's too much going on all over the place through different mediums, and it should just be all right at home in the game itself. Anyway, guys, maybe I'll make more of these. I don't know. Depends how this video does. But I really appreciate you watching, and maybe I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys. This is the way the world ends. It's a